Hi, everyone. I still remember when I was a kid, and in the school we were getting invitations to attend different events with our parents. In return, we would get a present for free. For me, it looked like the most exciting plan for the weekend, although my parents didn't like it so much. I kept insisting and insisting, and I think I managed to convince them once or twice, but not as many times as I would have liked it. What I couldn't understand at that time is that nothing comes for free. So in return, my parents had to listen to one talk regarding or describing the benefits of a new toy or a new yogurt, and also sharing some personal information. Names, addresses, ages, and possibly answer some questions regarding food or playing habits. If we think a bit carefully, this is a pretty similar business model to companies like Spotify, Facebook, or Instagram are currently using at the moment. I want you to watch uh, a video now. It's from a campaign run by UNICEF with nine children and teenagers that are completely anonymous. I will let you judge what happens. The videos in the Spanish, I put some uh, subtitles, they are auto-translated, so some of them are not 100% accurate, but that will not block anyone from understanding the context. ¿Te podemos hacer unas preguntitas? Sí. ¿Puedes pasar? ¿Nos puedes atender un momentito? Te estábamos esperando. ¿Te puedes sentar, por favor? Muchas gracias. Según tus últimas declaraciones, no estás muy contenta. ¿Cómo va todo? Pues hay a veces que está bien, pero hay a veces que no. ¿Te gusta mucho Harry Potter? Sí. ¿Es verdad que llegas más tarde a casa de lo habitual? Sí. Queríamos preguntarte acerca de los últimos partidos de baloncesto. Creo que no has metido muchas canastas. No. Has sacado muy buenas notas este cuatrimestre, ¿verdad? Sí. ¿Cómo lo has hecho? Pues estudiando. Lo primero enhorabuena, ¿verdad? Por la fantástica temporada que estáis haciendo en el equipo de baloncesto. Sí. ¿Quieres dedicarle a alguien tu éxito? Mm, a mi familia y a mis amigos. Esto va a ser en la tele o algo. Hay muchas cámaras y muchos focos. Creo que estás estudiando inglés. Sí. ¿Quieres desarrollar tu carrera artística en Hollywood? No lo sé. No lo sé, no, 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 no lo sé. ¿Piensas que la historia interminable, la película, es una mierda? No sé qué es esto. Tengo esta foto que demuestra que efectivamente le dedicas bastante tiempo a tu cuerpo. Uh -huh. ¿Se liga mucho con este estilo? Uf, pues... Ay, es que hay más pillado. Cantas, tocas el violín, la flauta... ¿Podrías cantarnos algo ahora? No. Qué vergüenza, no, no. Qué vergüenza, no, no, no. También sabemos que haces danza contemporánea. ¿Podrías hacernos una demostración aquí a la cámara? No me... no... Me da mucha vergüenza y no me siento como... Madre mía. ¿Me podéis ya...? ¿No quieres seguir? ¿Por qué? ¿Y eso de dónde lo habéis sacado? Te ha podido decir mi madre. Me siento como raro. ¿Te han dado algo de información sobre mí? Me parece raro que sepas tanto de mi vida. Me intimida. So all the information that was shared in this video was getting or was gotten from the public profiles of all these kids and teenagers from Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat. However, I'm not here today to tell you to think twice before you share your personal information. Because I do believe that sharing personal information also brings so many benefits. For example, at Spotify, because we know your listening history, we are able to deliver on a weekly basis our Discovery Weekly, which is mainly a tailored list of songs based on your music days. What I want to talk today is about the responsibility that we as companies have to protect our users regarding how we collect, how we manage, and how, you sh how we share your personal data. I will do that by describing all the pri data privacy infrastructure that we have built at, uh, to help Spotify comply 
with the different data privacy regulations around the world, including GDPR. So just to back up and make sure all of us are on the same page, Spotify is a music streaming service. We launched exactly 10 years ago. We have free and premium tiers, and we are available in 65 countries. We have over 180 million monthly active users, and we often talk about how big data we have, and, and, but it's hard to put it into perspective. So I like football, and if we compare how many users we have compared to uh, the size of the Real Madrid Stadium, this is more than 2,000 times. And we have a catalog with more than 40 million songs. Obviously, I think it's fair to say that we are a big data company. We handle so much data. Obviously, not as critical as, as, Spotify, or, sorry, as Facebook or Instagram, but that's not an excuse to have in place processes and tooling to help protect the privacy of all our users. So, this is by definition of the different privacy laws. Users have the right to access the data we process about them. They can also request a copy in a machine-readable format and transfer it to another system or another party service uh, in order to use it. They can update the data if it's incomplete or inaccurate. They can object to us from processing some or all of uh, the personal data, and they can decide that we should remove all tracks that we have from them, all the personal data that we have from them. How have we implemented? This is by definition, but how we have done it at Spotify. We built a privacy portal. So we try to simplify the interfaces for your users towards Spotify. And this is how it looks like. So from the website, you can actually log into Spotify and you will find a window similar to this one. On the left hand, hand, on the left hand um, side, you will have a menu. Uh, and since the last few months, we have included the privacy settings. Here is with, where you can manage your data and you can control how we as a company make use of your data. For example, you can decide to opt in and out from us processing Facebook data or tailor advertisements. But again, this is still on a high level. How does it work underneath? Let me introduce you to Padlock. Padlock is our global key management system, but it's a bit more than that. It also handles user consents. At Spotify, we have a very complex and diverse data private or data um, ecosystem, data infrastructure ecosystem. We have a backend uh, infrastructure with, like with millions of requests per second that are processed, processed by thousands of uh, microservices. And our batch data processing is equally complex. We have thousands of jobs written in different processing frameworks. We have Shio, we have BigQuery, we have Spark, and many others. For this reason, and, and the data that these uh, processes or these systems and, and pipelines use power really critical parts of our organization. We use data to obviously pay labels and write holders. We use the data to do music recommendations, and we use the data as well to run A-B testing. However, even though we encourage to have um, this diversity, there are certain things that require a company-wide standard, and one of them is privacy. So it could be extremely time-consuming and resource-intense to validate different strategies and make sure that all of them comply to the standards that we have set at Spotify. So in this case, we created a single standard that works everywhere, for everyone, and for all our business cases. So one of the standards that we have selected is to encrypt our data. So it's a simple one. Um, all the data, all the personal data that needs to be persisted needs to be encrypted. Why do we do this? Uh, first of all, because it reduces the impact of leaking a data set. 
each user will have a keychain associated. So if one data set is leaked, that data set is encrypted. So then attackers will find the data set completely useless because hopefully the, the encryption keys or the decryption keys hasn't been um, leaked. Second, because we want to have and control the whole life cycle of the data from a central point. The latter is especially important, especially for such a big company like Spotify. So let's say that you as a user decides that we should remove all the data. How do we do it now? Well, we said that each user has a set of keys. Well, if we remove the keys, data that belongs to that user is completely inaccessible. What would it happen otherwise? Like, if we didn't have this setup with encryption, that means that we would have to know all the systems that are using the data, where the data is located, who is uh, using the data, and make sure that everyone removes the keys in order to, or everyone removes the data. So obviously for us, this would never be an option. So as I said before, we encourage diversity, we encourage autonomy, and for us, autonomy is one of the keys uh, and is one of the successes, main successes for Spotify. So we encourage autonomy of our squads, that is the term that we use for uh, teams at Spotify, and we also encourage them to build their own solutions uh, without minimum contact with other teams at Spotify. Why do we do that? Basically, to increase the, perform like the performance of, of everyone. So having a simple rule, encrypt the data before, encrypt the personal data before it is persisted, is a simple rule that everyone follow. It requires a minimum overhead for all our, all our teams, and also we can make sure that we uphold uh, the data privacy standards that we have at the company. So, how does Padlock work? So each service, every time that it needs to encrypt or decrypt the data, will make a call to the padlock service. So let's say, for example, that you as a user want to or want to um, take a look at your playlist. Even though if it's your own playlist, that playlist is going to be encrypted. So the playlist service will make a call to padlock, and padlock will retrieve the keys that are needed to decrypt the playlist. Then you will be able to browse it, open it, and see which songs are part of the of that playlist. But if we talk a little bit more in detail, each service has a unique and secret key. Again, we do this to protect Spotify in this case. Like, if the service key leaks, it will only affect one service, but it's not affecting all the services, all the thousands of services that we have at Spotify. Additionally, every time the service will call Padlo, we'll call it with a secret key. At the same time, Padlock has a set of keys that we call root or master keys. Those keys are never shared with anyone or with any service outside the Padlock service. So what we do is we use the service key, we use the master keys, and we use a key derivation algorithm. So what Padlock will return to the service is actually the derived keys. We use uh, all the keys, actually, are stored in a Cassandra uh, database. You might know that Spotify is on top of Google Cloud, or our infrastructure is on Google Cloud. So you might be wondering, why are we using Cassandra instead of a Google Cloud product? The reason, the main reason, is that when we started to develop Padlock, Google didn't have any competitors at that time. We had two main requirements global replication, and high availability. So by that time, Big, Big Table didn't have global replication. This feature is still in alpha. And a Spanner was completely untested within Spotify. So our go-to choice, or our default option, was, was to use a product that already had proven those requirements across the whole company. Again, high availability and global replication. So if you are curious about more details regarding Padlock, we recently published a blog post. You have the, the link there. And I invite everyone, actually, to read it. We even provide more, more information. So just to summarize, by implementing this technology or this system, by implementing Padlock, we were able to help Spotify comply with user rights to 
update, object, and erase the data for our users. How many of you here have requested data from any of the services? Can be like Spotify, can be Facebook, can be Google, YouTube. Raise your hand. Well, I would say it's quite many, maybe like 60% or something. So if you want to do it at Spotify, again, we go back to the privacy portal. So you will go to the privacy portal, you will go to request my data, and you will get a window similar to this one. So the only thing you need to do, basically, is click on request, and automatically, the process will be initiated. So this is how it will look like. So you press the, the request button, then you will get, or you will go to step two, your data is going to be prepared, it will take 30 days, and as soon as it's ready to download, you will get an email. We say here 30 days, but normally we deliver the data in about one week. And finally, step three. Um, once the data is available, you should have got an email, but you can also go to the privacy portal and see it here. You will get, you have 14 days to download the data, uh, and it will tell you like until when you can download it and the size of the data. But again, how does it work underneath? We implemented ROSA. So ROSA is uh, the pipeline that aggregates data Spotify collects from our users upon their requests. So as I said, you click on requests, that will be a trigger to the Rosaria service. And Rosaria is basically like the middle layer or the front layer between users and all our backend services. So we have a service that is called Subject Access Request. That service will make a request to Rosaria saying, please give me all the pending requests that haven't been served at the moment. So let's say that you as user ID, and, and we index all those users based on user ID. So you will have an internal user ID that can be, let's say, like one, two, three. So you will, we all, the, actually the service will get user one, two, three has requested the data. At the same time, we will actually store all the user IDs that we still need to serve the data in BigQuery and also GCS. Next step would be actually all the upstream dependencies to ROSA will start producing the data. Which data does, for example, payments, does, for example, account information, or that can be as well as streaming history. And we will do that for the last 90 days. One important thing here is both ROSA and Rosaria are data agnostic, meaning that, and I will go into more detail in the next slide, but it means that we don't care about the data itself. We, for that, actually, we have the different pipeline owners or the different data owners. Possibly this is a little bit of a killing, like if you have just a couple of data sets or a, a, like a few data sets, but for us, we cannot ensure that one team should be responsible for all the data. So in this case, what these pipelines will do, apart from producing the data that is needed for our users, they will actually decrypt the data from the semantic point of view, from the, um, from the field point of view, and they will encrypt it with the pipeline key. Then the collector will collect all the data, as I said, can be payment information, can be a streaming history, all that will be collected, will be decrypted with the pipeline key and encrypted with the Rosaria key. And it's going to be a store in Bigtable. Why do we do that? It's easier to index in Bigtable. And also, we will put a TTL. We want to make sure if, for any reason, you as user will not download the data, the, late, the data will not live forever in our Bigtable database. So after a few days, if you haven't collected it, it's going to be removed. And after that, the collector will send a request to Rosaria saying, hey, the data for user ID 123 is ready to be collected. Rosaria will go to Bigtable, they will collect that data, they will produce a compressed zip JSON file, and then that's the time when you actually get an email. Your data is there, please download it in the next 14 days. So I already introduced uh, this topic a little bit. So why this setup? We have thousands of data sets. 
we cannot expect that one single team knows all the data that we are handling at Spotify. It's impossible to know the different fields and make sure that we don't deliver things that we shouldn't. And I'm talking about internal identifiers. It would be extremely confusing for our users to get an internal identifier in the file and just wonder, like, what is this? So that's why we actually rely on the data owners to ensure that the data is delivered is exactly what the customers are looking for. So both Rosaria and Rosa, as I mentioned before, are completely data agnostic. And the, all, the other thing is data is encrypted end to end. You saw that we have different process to encrypt the crypt based on pipeline key, based on uh, the service key. But the main idea, as I said before, is we are relying on encryption. And data is just decrypted when we share it with the customer. So just to summarize, different user rights, and we have managed to solve all of them just by building two different systems. So Rosa is serving access and portability, while Padlock update object and erasure user uh, rights. However, we have also built some additional controls. We have built a system where it keeps track of all the uh, data access requests based on who gets access and the criticality or the sensi sensitivity of the data, meaning that more sensitive data will require more hoops. And what that means is basically a higher stand -up, a standard. <laughs> and we also keep your data just as long as it's needed for business and also legal purposes. There is some data that we, can, like, we need to keep in order to provide you with the service, the Spotify service. And that is, for, for example, your songs, like your song library. That is, for example, your account information, or it can be your playlist. But if that is not the case, we will just keep as much as is as it needed. So even though my talk was one of the first today, I'm sure you will get so many information and so many like good tips along these two days. So I wanted to summarize my presentation in three main takeaways. The first one is we have, as I have detailed already, we have used encryption. And we do believe that encryption works completely fine for our use case. We are going to start exploring anonymization techniques such as differential privacy or key anonymity. The reason for that is we, have, we are a big data company. We need to take data-driven decisions. We have a lot of analysts that are actually trying to find trends, and, and they don't need to understand what you, as a single user, is doing. What they need to understand is, again, the trend of users that are in this country around this age are actually doing or how they, they are using this product. So that's why we believe that Anonymization is the next big thing that we are going to look at. And this is not a substitute of encryption in any way. We will continue doing encryption. This is just a complement. But whatever you decide, anonymization, encryption, or any other solution, keep in mind that you must protect the privacy of your users. People want to engage freely and safely using digital technologies. That is why it's really important, like data regulation as GDPR or any other data privacy regulations, because it gives the power to the users to decide how we as a company make use of the data and how and explain why. So privacy standards are crucial. And the last thing is very, it's very easy, actually, to keep all the data that we collect. It's much harder, actually, to start thinking about the business cases that you need to implement in your company and identify the data that is linked to those business cases. However, keep in mind as well that encryption has penalties. Encryption has cost and performance penalties. And even though we have optimized and streamlined the process, 
that helps us reinforce the message that we just want to keep the data that we need for our business and legal obligations. So keep the data you need and follow the data minimization principle. And data and data-driven decisions are kind of revolution uh, or revolutionizing the whole world at the moment. And privacy is one of the big players here. So remember why you are here. Remember that you have a responsibility and make sure that you protect your users. Thank you very much. OK, I, I bring the OK, you have the, the microphone. I have many questions. <laughs> Go ahead. OK, the first one. Had you considered other alternatives of encryptation? Um, yeah, we did that. So one option that we were considering is actually um, defining a deletion data endpoints per system. Uh, so then every time, for example, a user wanted to delete data, we from Padlock, we will call all the different deletion endpoints yep. and remove the data. But that means that we had to rely on everyone deleting that data. In this case, our option was more, we encrypt, we have the keys, we remove the keys from a central point, it's gone everywhere. Another option that we considered was tokenization. And that means that all data would be stored in a central database. Yes. And the different systems we have tokens referencing those, uh, that data. The problem, and even though that looks promising, is different systems have different um, performance or latencies. So in our case, it would be like extremely hard to have one single database fulfilling all our cases or business cases. Okay. And so my doubt. <laughs> but I have now I have another one. I think that you are really brave. Your company is really brave, but you are really brave. Because few companies, few enterprises talk about privacy. Why you are here? Why you are in big data Spain talking about your policies for the information for something that is people just to try it and hide so hard. Why well, this is it? actually the first time that Spotify is talking about data privacy. The first time? First time. And it's so here for in, me, big, in big data For Spain. me, actually, being in my hometown talking about privacy is That's like great. a plus. That's great. Thank you. And why we do that is like um, we shouldn't forget that where we are at the moment is thanks to our users. And data privacy is key for us. And as I said before, like we have a responsibility to protect the privacy of all of them. Sure, you are. And we are an also like proud of all the things we have done to be where we are at the moment. So now it's time for us to share it. But you are setting an example that. Mm, That's what we are hoping. The more we like, the more companies talk about it, the better it's going to be for the customers. Thank you so much. We don't Thank have you so much. Time. Thank you. I'm so Thank sorry. Thank you so much. If any of you have more questions should be outside because the, qu the time is not... Uh, I'm Perfect. So, I'm so Feel sorry. free to grab me. I'm going to be outside. The outside. Hall. In Ask the Experts, it's going to be there, and they can ask you as many as, you, as they want. So Thank thanks, you so Irene. Much. And big applause for her. Thanks Thank to you. Thank you so much.